debate. Thank you, John. All right. So as journalists, we know all too well the pitfalls of the 24-hour news cycle, right? Like less and less of what we see on shows like this is news. Reporting the news has become an excuse for talking heads to wedge their personal opinions into a story. Well, at BNN, we know that opinions mean nothing without facts. Facts are like hypoallergenic cats. They're not objectively cute and they need sweaters. So tonight, in our debate segment, I'd like to bring back some journalistic integrity and simply argue the facts. Now, I know I'm not perfect. I know that I have inherent bias, just like everyone else. I know I love to share my opinions, especially on hot divisive topics, just like these. It's probably why I'm not an 8chan anymore. But pretending to be objective doesn't help anybody. So this time, John and I are gonna switch it up and bring you a real, factual discussion. I'm gonna do the work, and I'm gonna argue from a position I have no experience in. And so is John. Uh, hey, Natty, um, we are? I didn't really... Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm down for whatever. I mean, I just prepared for this as a regular debate, so um, do you want me to read yeah, these no. beforehand or...? Oh, no, yeah, 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 Look, I got cards here too, baby. But remember, we need to be brave, okay? We owe our viewers our vulnerability. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I like that. Of course, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know what, let's do this. I'm, I'm, I'm game, I'm game. All right, let's do it. Okay, as you know, I'm a hard-nosed conservative with deep familial and religious ties to the KKK. Uh, in, in fact, I'm proud to say that it was my family who beheaded the beloved University of Miami Gator, Gator as a rite of passage. Wait, Natalie, I don't think that's right. And also, I, this is... This is not me. What are you talking about? Yeah, but, but remember, you're arguing from my point of view. Got it? As an ethnically ambiguous cis woman with, all, with a love of all genders, I believe women should have autonomy over their own bodies fully. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I, do, I, I do believe that. <laughs> okay. Um, birth control pills are critical to sexual liberation but they are also a major contributor to hormonal imbalances which affect all women differently. I know. And access to reproductive health care is limited for many women, and even those women think taking whatever pills have been peddled by the hardest pharma reps are not necessarily the right one for her individual health. Say it. Yes. Yes. Fact. Women pay higher health insurance premiums until they reach the age of menopause due to the potential that they might have a baby? Yes! Oh my god, fuck yes! Preach that shit! This includes women on birth control and even women who don't have uteruses. Uteri? U uteruses. Mm, mm. John, I love this. I love this on you. I love it. Fact. Number two. Uh, childbirth is associated with more short-term risks to a woman's health than abortion. This means women are literally putting their lives on the line every time we choose to follow through with a pregnancy, yet the entire country acts like because it's natural and maternal that all women should do it and should be, and it should be up to everyone else to tell her what to do. You hear that? That's the sound of me going, yes, queen, say it loud, say it proud. Fact. A woman having an abortion has nothing to do with you or me. Fuck yes! Absolutely. Unless you were directly associated with the making of the baby, the decision that this woman makes has absolutely no impact on your personal life or your finances. <laughs> what are you afraid is going to happen anyway? Worst case scenario, her baby grows up to be a serial killer because they didn't have stable financial resources because her parents insisted that she have the baby even though she was only 16 at the time because they needed to make a point about God's plan. Yes! And at the same time, God's plan seemed to include lots of judgment from her immediate family, her baby daddy family, and her close friends who ended up alienating her with guilt, even though having a baby is supposed to be like <laughs> life-changing, beautiful experience, am I right? And after the pregnancy, since she barely finished high school and had to get a GED and wasn't able to start college because she had to work three jobs to make ends meet because her baby daddy bounced and impregnated her former best friend, former best friend, of course, her parents would make a huge stink about the babysitting and tell that she was on her own and not to ask them for money because she made this bed and she had to lay in it. Lay in it. Lay in it. 
You said it, not me. I mean, I wrote it, but you said it. So because the baby ends up growing up unsupervised for a lot of the time, only socialized in school settings and constantly taken from their mother's custody because the state won't help the mom with things like childcare and basic necessities, bouncing in and out of foster care to the point that the child eventually develops a deep-seated rage and malcontent for anyone who doesn't, quote, get them. And then that grown-up teenage baby crosses paths with you with their part-time car wash job and you get short with them because your stupid card reader is all scratched up and the card reader won't read it. And then later that night, an angry teenage baby uses your membership information to find your house and straight up ends you. Like, that's the only way an abortion would really affect you. If you stood in the way of one. Uh, uh, Natty, do you, um, uh, I think it's your turn. Oh, you know what, John? Um, sorry, I just had a little too much wine. Um, honestly, like, you have made some really valid points, and... I don't really wow. see anything else left to argue. So thank you so much for tuning into BNN. This has been a debate. Back to you, John. Wait.